we're discussing the subject of wisdom, and in our quest to attain wisdom, to acquire wisdom, we've seen the lives of men like Solomon and Daniel, uh, and men like uh, Joseph, who through very unusual ways received an impartation of wisdom. And we're looking at now uh, ways in which wisdom can and will direct our lives. Um, in this first principle, we want to look at wisdom will direct you to the right mentors. Uh, most people in life uh, want to do well. Most people in life want to succeed. And so uh, some, some time ago, I was in uh, the city of uh, Abuja, and a young man came up to me that I'd never met before. He said he'd watched our television program, and uh, he had learned so much and was attempting to acquire more information. And he said to me, uh, uh, he asked me, he said, uh, Bishop Bismarck, can you be my father? And uh, I said to him, I said, son, I said, uh, that's easier said than done. And uh, so I said, why don't you come have breakfast with me tomorrow? And so the next day we sat down and uh, we had this wonderful discussion. Uh, uh, what the young man needed, he didn't need a father. Uh, he felt he needed a father. Uh, let me explain. A father is somebody uh, that can help identify your DNA and then help you function within the confines of that DNA. I'm talking about spiritual DNA, uh, where your message uh, and your method uh, and your mission can be identified. And generally, a father does that. For example, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So it was the father that identified his son, Jesus, and identified his mission, his method, and his message, and then provided with him the means to do it. So we didn't need a father. Uh, neither did he need a mentor. A mentor is somebody that will identify your gift. They identify your gift and help you perfect that gift. A mentor is somebody who will take your gift, guide you in your gift, and lead you to the areas of your life so that your gift can be released, your gift can be utilized, and your gift can be fully maximized. Uh, he didn't need a mentor because he already had his wonderful gift that was working well. Uh, what he needed was a coach. The third thing that comes is not a father, not a mentor. He needed a coach. A coach is one who knows your gift, and now they're going to help you refine that gift. And so we just needed a few ideas on how to refine his gift. Uh, and so I said, look, I'll give you a few ideas. I'll be your coach just for a short season so that your gift can be refined. Definitely not a father. You definitely don't need a mentor. You need a coach, somebody that can tweak your gift and give you maximum and optimum performance. Uh, and then while we're in the neighborhood, uh, sometimes individuals may not need a coach. They might need a guide. So that's number four. A guide is somebody uh, who can lead you through a, a portion of your life and navigate you through a part of your journey. It might be a treacherous part of your journey. For example, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, knew the wilderness. He became their guide. He was not their father. Uh, he was a mentor to Moses, but he wasn't a mentor to Israel. He was their guide through a difficult time in the wilderness uh, in Israel's experience. And so you might need a guide. So wisdom then will direct you either to a mentor, to a coach, a guide, or even a spiritual father. And, and wisdom then is the principal thing. Number two, wisdom will lead you to truth. And truth will bring understanding for you to recognize your priorities. Wisdom will lead you to truth. And truth will give you understanding to recognize your priorities. Uh, Jesus is the spirit of truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is uh, John chapter number 14, verse 6. Jesus is the spirit of truth. He said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Wisdom will never lead you to a lie. Wisdom cannot lie. Uh, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That thief is the spirit of the devil who is the father of lies. Wisdom will never lead you to a demonic system. Wisdom will never lead you to a lie. Wisdom will always lead you to truth. And when you pray for wisdom, one of the things you're going to get is the spirit of truth. And truth will help you understand and recognize your priorities. Truth will reveal to you your weakness. 
Wisdom will show you how to deal with that weakness. Truth will reveal to you your deficiency. Wisdom will give you ideas to, to live above that deficiency. Truth will reveal to you your incompetencies. Wisdom will lead you to a place where you can find competencies and become stronger in, in areas where you are incompetent. Truth will reveal to you areas uh, where you need to improve. Wisdom will give you steps as to how you can improve your life. Wisdom will help you find truth. Number three, wisdom will generate a conducive atmosphere that determines the right results in your life. Everything in life is about atmosphere. It's about atmosphere. It's, it's very difficult to, to create something uh, of, of any credibility if there's no atmosphere. And for this, we look at Genesis chapter number uh, 1, where God began to renovate the earth. The Bible says that by wisdom, God founded the earth. So what does that mean? It means that in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 2, the earth was without form and void, Darkness was on the face of the deep. There was total chaos. Uh, there was total mayhem. And so what does God do? Through wisdom, through wisdom, God is going to change that atmosphere so that he can bring his very best into the earth. And that's man. God's idea was to bring human beings into the earth. So the first thing that God is going to do through wisdom is going to change the atmosphere. He's going to lift all the chaos, lift all the darkness, He's going to bring light. He's going to separate the waters from the land. He's going to exercise uh, uh, order. He's then going to uh, uh, take the terrain and the topography of the land, break its monotony, carpet the world with grass, embroider uh, the valleys with flowers. He's, he's then going to create the sun, the moon, and the stars to create an ambience. Uh, he's going to then bring a variety of animals with a multiplicity of species. All of that has to do with atmosphere. And when the atmosphere was right, it was then that God said, let us make man in our image. Now, God could have made man in the very beginning and stuck man in an environment where there was total chaos. All that would have happened to man would have been total chaos in his life and total mayhem. And there would not be the opportunity to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth and subdue it. So wisdom then uh, creates and generates the co a conducive atmosphere so that we can have good results. Number four, wisdom provides the strategy to deal with our battles and to identify the giants that we must fight so that we can understand our reward. Wisdom provides the strategy to deal with these battles and these giants. Every person has battles. Every person faces giants. Every person goes through struggles. And so we need to learn which battles to fight, uh, which wars to take on, the scripture says a wise man, before he goes into a battle, counts the cost of that battle. The scripture says a wise man, before he builds a tower, counts the cost of that tower and manages the cost of that tower before he builds it. And so wisdom then will give you the kinds of understanding and strategy to deal with giants. And so killing Goliath uh, was not just uh, enthusiasm, not just an anointing on David's life, David used wisdom. He understood how uh, to, to face this giant and also the benefits. And this is seen by the, the question that David asks. He says, what's going to be given to the man who kills this giant? And so David then is exercising wisdom because he knows if I'll kill this giant, there's a great reward. And in this case, there was a three-prong reward. Uh, the first reward was uh, you'll marry the king's daughter. That's elevation in your social strata. Number three, you'll be given great riches. That's elevation in your wealth. Number four, there's going to be tremendous release. Uh, there'll be no taxes given and your land will be repatriated. That's elevation in one's possessions. And so wisdom then will give you the idea to fight the battles and to face the kinds of giants that we face in our lives. Number five, wisdom will reveal the significance of the sacrifices you have to make and also open to you the size of the altars that these sacrifices require. Let me say that again. Wisdom will reveal the significance of the sacrifices you make. Every human being makes sacrifices, but most times we don't know the significance of the sacrifice. 
wisdom will reveal the significance of the sacrifice. Uh, for example, Abraham was required to sacrifice his son Isaac. Uh, if you'll study the book of Genesis, Abraham had made five different sacrifices, each of them with different levels of significance. But this sacrifice he's about to make of his own son, wisdom was going to reveal to him that now God says, I'm going to trust you with great things. Uh, in chapter number 15 of Genesis, Abraham made a significant sacrifice where he becomes a covenant partner with God and he sacrifices five animals. Wisdom reveals the significance of that sacrifice. We can never know uh, uh, the significance of the sacrifice until wisdom comes. And listen, for any person that's going to be significant in life, for any person that's going to be a high achiever in life, it is part of the life uh, principle that sacrifice is important. Uh, sometimes a parent has to sacrifice their pleasure uh, or, or, or their future uh, by, by sacrificing to put children through school. That means that they may have to work two or three jobs to, to give their kids a university experience. Uh, sometimes an older brother may have to sacrifice his life so that the younger brothers can attain something. But, but sometimes people can sacrifice and be bitter at the end of their journey. Wisdom will reveal the significance of your sacrifice and also show you the size of the altar required because there's a great reward that comes from sacrifice. If a person is not paid for their sacrifice, then the altar has been cheated and wisdom will show you how to repatriate what belongs to you. Wisdom will determine what you need to relinquish so that you can establish gain. Uh, for, for you to be a high achiever in life, for you to, to attain something great in life, there are some things that you have to give up so that you can gain something. Wisdom will determine what you need to relinquish in exchange for what you need to gain. Uh, sometimes uh, for, for, for those that want to, for example, become doctors or lawyers or, or attain a higher level of ministry, you can't be watching football all the time. You can't be on television all the time. You can't be spending endless hours playing video games. You can't be listening to uh, music endlessly. Wisdom will show you what you need to relinquish, what you need to give up in exchange for what you need to gain. Be because you can't give up everything to gain something, but you have to give up some things to gain something. So, so the world's most powerful and most significant scripture is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why did God give his son? He gave his son. He relinquished that so that he could gain other sons. And to as many as believed him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. God gave up a son to gain many, many sons and daughters for generations. Wisdom will teach you how to do that. And finally in this session, Wisdom will point out role models, people that you should emulate, and also wisdom will reveal their secrets to their success. There are so many people that are successful or so-called successful, so many people that have uh, certain lifestyles that have uh, achieved mightily, but they may not have the kinds of values, they may not have the kinds of uh, environment that's conducive for you as a Christian. So wisdom will point out the kinds of role models you follow. And wisdom will open up to you the secrets of their success. Uh, I have several role models throughout the ages. Uh, a role model for me is definitely uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Martin Luther King. Everybody loves Mandela. And so all of these individuals become role models. But you look at the secret of their success. Somebody like Indira Gandhi to me is mind-blowing. When I look at individuals of the past who made such massive contributions to the family of man, those are my role models. But it's not enough just to admire somebody for what they've done. Wisdom will reveal the secrets of how they've done it. And so I pray for you to get wisdom. I pray for you to access the codes of wisdom, to have understanding of deep mysteries. Father, I pray for every person seeking wisdom. God bless them mightily. God elevate you mightily. I'm Bishop Judah Bismarck from Harare, Zimbabwe, pastor of New Life Covenant Church.